Welcome to our webinar, Document Organization Strategy in Office 365 and SharePoint. I'm Daryl Trimble, CEO of SP Marketplace. We've been transforming Office 365 into a digital workplace since 2012. We are the leading provider of out-of-the-box workplace solutions that allow you to take Office 365 and SharePoint to the next level. We started in 2012 in Northern California, and we've worked with over 1,300 organizations worldwide to help them in this transformation. We hope this will be an educational webinar for you and that it'll help you in moving forward your Office 365 deployment. This is the third webinar in a series, and what this whole webinar series really is about is how to make it easy to do business inside your organization. If we take a look at traditional organizations, we see that often they were grown organically, uh, department by department, and ended up with um, several functional departments as well as operational departments uh, in the organization. Now, unfortunately, what happens though is when we talk about documents and resources, it often ends up like this because each organization or each department does things in a different way and stores documents in a different way and thus making it very hard for employees to actually leverage those resources easily without uh, having to wonder where they are or maybe it comes by in uh, emails and wondering if they have the latest versions. What we're going to talk about today is how you can actually go from the traditional way of doing things to leveraging um, an internal services structure and document structure in a digital workplace on Office 365. We're going to show you how you can actually use Office 365 and SharePoint to bridge across departments and create an internal business structure which includes document organization uh, and some other things. And in essence, we'll talk today about how you can actually organize your documents in an overall structure that is a portal structure you uh, do as part of your intranet deployment and operational portal. Um, structure in SharePoint and Office 365. When we work with customers in building an effective intranet structure and overall operational portal structure in Office 365, we look at four different pillars of employee productivity. The first one is information, news, events, announcements, even uh, employee directory and those type of things. The, the everyday information and events and things they need to keep up on uh, in the organization, which is awfully flies by an email or there's no kind of organization around it. The second area, and this is what this webinar focuses on, is resources. Documents such as policies, procedures, forms, other reference documents that may be used across the organization or may be confidential to a certain group. Also, it includes media and even bringing in informational things like frequently asked questions and knowledge bases. A third pillar of employee productivity is services. And those are such things as questions, um, problems, requests, and so on that maybe in some organizations or some departments uh, there is a help desk for. Other ones you have to make phone calls. Um, but it's something that can take up a lot of time if there's not a consistent way of uh, requesting services. And then finally, how employees get at processes. They could be uh, uh, HR related processes or employee facing processes from finance such as expenses or purchases, travel requests and so on. All of these things are the common things that employees need to get at, but unfortunately each department does them in a different way. So on this one we'll really be focusing on the resources pillar. And once again, this is part of a um, series digital, on a digital workplace, the five steps to a digital workplace on Office 365. If you started with uh, this one, you can look back and see a couple of our other webinars um, that uh, you'll see links to uh, either when you finish this one or uh, on our website. You can find them at spmarketplace.com. And our first one was really talking about how you can def define your internal business structure and uh, work to define a common way to do services across departments. Then we hit really the first pillar, how defining a communication process for news and announcements and events um, in your organization that's effective for everybody as well, and how you can set up an internet homepage uh, to do that and have that also interact with other parts of the uh, organization through department portals or group portals. 
The second part of it, is, I mean, the third part of it is what we'll be talking about today, how to organize resources and documents. The fourth step uh, and fourth webinar is really talking about internal services, a consistent way to provide services to employees uh, from different departments such that it is very easy for employees to get help from different departments. And then finally, how do you integrate uh, all of these components with the business processes that employees use every day? So let's go take a look at uh, organizing resources and documents. So one of the things that we see in many organizations is, you know, people are out there and staff and so on is wondering, where are our organization documents? Well, without any type of structure or plan, they're probably all over the place. Uh, a lot of them probably are still on paper. They're in filing cabinets as well. Uh, many more documents probably are on people's uh, client uh, machines, either their laptops or their hard drives in, on desktops. And in some organizations, they've even um, gotten together and said, hey, we need to put some stuff in a, in a central place and put together a file server. But often the file server, there's really no plan to it, and sometimes it can be, uh, become a monster of um, hierarchy of folders, and that makes it hard to figure out, you know, where is a document, and uh, is, are the documents secure, is, is governance applied to them? So this is what we see in, in many organizations out there. They've not stepped back and thought through this overall process. And one of the things that really prevents this is because a lot of these resources and documents are um, related to departments, which are really siloed functions, and they have different document storage standards uh, on where they put policies and procedures and so on, which really is tough for the employee because they have to look across all of this, and often there isn't an overall plan for uh, how each or functional organization uh, is storing their documents and, and making sure that uh, um, they're organized in a way, especially if um, their customers, the employees, have to get at them. And from the employee's perspective, what it really looks like is this, and that things are all over the place. They, they may spend time looking for the right document or even not sure if they have the right version. Documents are probably emailed around uh, as well. Again, a problem for both security and uh, the right version and people miss things in email. In fact, uh, email is a way overused stream of uh, chaotic information out there. And we find that especially this makes employees very frustrated, whether it's the salesman looking for the latest uh, proposal uh, template, or if it's um, somebody looking for uh, an employee record for an employee that just left and uh, there may be legal issues out there or a customer legal issue as well. So uh, it's very important really to put together some type of structure or you'll be in this situation. And when we take a look at it, some of the issues are of course, where is it kept? Where can I find the document I'm looking for? And how do I find it? Even if I know it's on that file server, you know, which folder is it under? Can I do a search for it? Or uh, is there a keyword I can use to find it there? And again, sometimes those file servers turn into a Frankenstein hierarchy uh, of different things as well. Um, maybe the author left the company and it was on uh, his or her computer. Uh, and uh, then the computer was cleared. We see this a lot. And this is really a huge mistake in, in many companies out there. Uh, or they attach it to emails. And, and which email was it attached to? Did I get it? Did I download it? Did I do something with it? And another thing is, do I have the latest version? I know I saw something three months ago uh, uh, for this policy or procedure, but um, you know, I'll go look in my email, see if I can find it, and maybe I find the wrong version out there. And then even, even more is how do I share comments or make changes? A lot of times, again, this is email overused, going back and forth. And again, do you have the right version or um, you know, did you get the latest changes? Uh, are people changing things at the same time? So what you're changing is not the latest one. So there's lots of uh, document issues out here that become a, a real problem. And the problem really falls into, uh, first of all, big time waste. People looking for things, using the wrong versions, all that type of thing, uh, creates employee frustration and just wastes time. It takes time away from uh, selling or servicing or any, any other things that are productive things. It also may cause bad decisions. 
You know, they may actually have the wrong version or old date of something or even send out a quote with the wrong price because they have the old price list out there uh, is another uh, typical thing that might happen. Another thing that a lot of companies don't realize, but until it's too late, is there is legal liability from lost history. If an employee comes back and is uh, suing the company, you know, where is uh, all the records and where is the documents related to uh, that employee? Uh, or a customer issue or a contract issue? You know, where is all the um, history from that uh, as well? Um, one, one example of a customer is we had a, a city that was being sued over contamination in a park pond. And they had done tests. They had done other things from years past and could not find any of it. They actually had to call back an old employee and have them give the history of it. And so it can actually be a big liability to not be able to manage your uh, document. And then finally, I'll call it missed opportunities. But it's when work had been done, uh, perhaps it uh, might be a competitive analysis or uh, analysis of, you know, from a financial perspective or something, and it was left on somebody's client machine. And as they left, it went with them. Um, so having to do work over or have, missing the analysis um, and not being able to share that uh, or pushing it through email and somebody missing it uh, as well. All of this is symptoms of uh, no document organization or of a chaotic document um, uh, structure out there. And this is really something that Office 365 uh, and a digital workplace can be a platform to solve. So let's take a look at um, what it means to really organize your documents in the cloud. Um, and, and taking and moving them and, and doing a, a organization or a document structure uh, using Office 365. So one of the first things that a lot of people do is they just say, hey, what can, where can we put documents in Office 365? What are the tools? And um, there's actually several uh, options that you have. You can use SharePoint and document libraries and access, access them from a SharePoint portal or team site. There is OneDrive. Uh, which is my personal documents, you know, documents that I use personally and can actually sync to my client files uh, on my um, laptop or desktop or whatever it might be. And then there's OneDrive for Business. And that's really where groups um, can actually share documents out there as well as part of teams or groups as well, too. But these are really just the services that store documents. They really don't provide any structure um, to that. And so a lot of people get confused um, thinking that, oh, I've got all the solution I need. I've got, you know, these uh, online document repositories through Office 365, but that's still not uh, providing really any structure on that. And a lot of times um, companies really just uh, continue the hierarchical file management approach that really started in the 19, you know, early 1900s. Uh, 1960s and so on, where everything was kept in file cabinets and then kept in folders. And the problem was the file cabinets grew, grew, and grew, and the, there's more and more different folders and more and more different uh, hierarchy uh, for that. So as um, you know, computerization came in and so on, a lot of companies moved to the file server. And let's keep everything on a file server. But the unfortunate thing is they just replicated the hierarchical man, uh, file management approach with uh, file folder uh, hierarchies out there. And after a while, it can get so big that it's hard to find a file um, because it's a complex hierarchy out there as well. And so the question is, you know, you may have a nice organization of it, but the files uh, really um, you have to go down one tree and look for another unless you, you can do a search, but then you have to have the right search component. So um, it, it's, it's problematic and really just extending something that uh, is uh, last century's uh, technique for doing that. So um, that's one other part of this is really you shouldn't be just gathering all the files together. You don't do that with your department, so you don't do that with your people. Um, so why do it with your files? Uh, put it in the context of where the files will uh, be used. Don't take your file server and just move it over into one big 
library in SharePoint or OneDrive for Business. That's a big mistake. It's a very common mistake as well. So what, what should you do? You know, how should you organize documents in a digital workplace? Well, one of the things that we have found that actually is very important is organize documents in the context of how they are used. Uh, if it's an employee um, document, put it in the HR portal where the HR staff can access it, but other you know, employees can't that shouldn't um, get their hands on a confidential document. Uh, if it's IT, if it's warranties or um, manuals for uh, different technology that they uh, maintain or support, uh, that should go in the IT portal as well. And same thing with product documents, engineering specs, all those type of things should really go in the context of where they would be used. So we suggest that you really align your document storage to your operational portal structure. And that's really what we talked about in our first webinar is how important it is to actually create a portal structure that is very much mirrors your uh, operational uh, structure itself. And really take a look at the role and type of documents. There are documents, as I mentioned earlier, the employee documents, those are confidential. And, and the role is really uh, for the HR staff to maintain those documents uh, for government regulations or um, whatever it might be. And the same thing goes with other documents, even in facilities or IT uh, as well. So the role of the document might be a supporting document for uh, an asset. Well, put it in the same place that you're actually going to get the asset. In fact, um, you know, in our applications, we've actually designed it so that if you have an asset in facilities or a computer asset uh, or a technology asset in IT, we cross-link the document um, that is related to that, whether it be a warranty or manual or whatever it might be, even a service contract, um, to the actual record uh, for the asset out there. So that's the other thing. The documents no longer uh, just exist in a file server separately from everything. You actually can link them into um, the process and the work uh, where they apply uh, out there as well. So the other thing, too, is you have to think about who needs to access these documents. Um, one of the things that we see uh, organizations do over and over again is they just create peer-to-peer -peer team sites for departments like IT and HR. But then somebody needs to get at something. They might need to get at from IT the PowerPoint reference card or something like that. Um, uh, or even a, you know, a, a video for how to uh, use uh, Word in Office 365. Um, those are things that everybody needs to get at. And um, the problem is when you use a peer-to-peer -peer portal like Team Sites, um, then you're mixing those document libraries with the ones that are confidential, uh, like you know technology contracts or other things like that, um, that you don't want all employees to get to. So you have to think about governance and you actually have to think about um, uh, are these documents meant for your customers, the internal customers, employees, um, or are they really just meant for your staff? Uh, who needs access and how do you control that? Um, you may not just want to control that with just permissions. And then finally, as we mentioned earlier, um, you're going to want to actually start to cross-reference um, a lot of your documents and your media and so on to the business function subjects, such as assets, such as employees, such as um, a work order uh, or other things like that, um, too. It could be to a customer in a contract. And to cross-reference those things, it's very hard to do that from a library in one um, site that is a mass document library um, to other sites that might be your IT or HR or something like that. So um, it's much more now in the context of how they're used and how you can cross-reference them too. So if we take a look at this, if we were to break this down a little bit, um, you know, in, in a company, um, you might have several places where documents are going to be kept. Um, they might be kept in a doc center. This is kind of a um, consolidation of documents that all employees want to get at. Uh, an example there would be a good thing that resides in kind of a common doc center where you do bring things together is policies and procedures and forms that are frequently used by all employees. 
And that way they don't have to go searching for the latest uh, drug policy or the latest uh, you know, computer use policy or that type of thing. It's all in a central doc center uh, that they can find. And when the d departments, IT, HR, whatever, finance, whatever it might be, um, publishes new policies, they can pu publish the latest version. So only the latest version exists up there too. So uh, those, are, those are frequently used kind of all employee type documents. Um, they're also, if you take a look at a department like IT or HR or whatever, there's going to be documents that are just for the staff, as we talked about. Um, and, but they, you also could create a separate part of that site that is called an employee portal. And you could create a um, SharePoint library, for instance, that's called a resource library, IT resource library. And that's where you drop the things that you want the employees to be able to get to, like that PowerPoint reference card um, as well. And there might even be specific collaboration type documents that are done in a team or a group. Uh, it could be the networking team or the um, you know, ERP application team. And they could share documents. And especially ones that are used in projects or those type of things that are collaborative type documents, that's uh, very good use to use in team or groups uh, with the OneDrive uh, related to it. And then sometimes you even have product or operational divisions and you might have products out there that have engineering specs or other types of things. So you might have a resource library out there in the division. Now for employees that want to get at things from that doc center, you can have a search that can search these lower portals and you might want it to search all the resource libraries from the uh, departments out there. But that way, they don't have to go search. They, they they don't have to go looking for things. They can go to the doc center, do a search for those things that are available to them. Or if they go into IT, they could go into the employee portal and go to that resource um, library that is specifically the destination page place for anything from that department that they want to present to employees. And it's very much almost like what you would see in bank branches or something like that. Is in those bank branches is um, the information that the bank wants to give to its customers, uh, as well as the place they do service requests and transactions. This is the same type of concept here. So that's why it's important to have a uh, portal structure, because then it makes where documents should go much easier. So let's talk a little bit about what we mean by this. Well, right now, um, in a lot of organizations, these documents are spread across departments. And even if you got, you know, and used groups or teams, again, it's peer to peer and they would be spread in the different departments. What we're really talking about here is kind of um, defining with the organization an agreement across all functional um, areas that says, this is how we expect you to organize your documents. Um, and we happen to do it in these portals. So it's really defining a common document and resource uh, structure that makes it easy for employees to get what they need. And it makes it um, safe and secure from a governance perspective. And also, it makes it clear where functional documents should reside. So one of the things that we've looked at here is, um, you know, not only the document activities, which we'll get into in just a minute, but let's do a document use analysis. So there are documents out there like policies, procedures, forms that almost all employees need to get to because they apply to them. And um, if we take a look at it, the source, all functions, all departments have some types of policies and procedures um, that apply to the organization. Um, it's used by most employees and it's internal use. So that's one type of set of documents there. Another is functional documents that are confidential to a certain uh, staff function or a reference for that staff function. And so it could be something that is legal references for the legal department, uh, technical references for IT that really aren't of interest to other um, employees. So, you know, why put them somewhere out there that, you know, is just going to uh, make it more complex for employees who really don't care about that stuff. So these type of things out here is really um, the, the target use is the functional staff out there uh, of that function, either HR team or the IT or finance. Um, also, the reason to put them uh, out there with those teams is because those teams also may use processes that relate to them, like uh, IT tracking assets 
uh, or HR tracking employees uh, out there and the employee records. And if you can, even cross-reference them. And again, it's staff use only. Um, another one is from the functional departments is internal customer reference. Um, and these are things that are available to employees, okay? These are, you know, like those quick reference cards or uh, a manual or uh, from HR, how to conduct an interview uh, kind of uh, uh, information. And those are really for the employees and available to everybody. So those really are what we call resource um, type of uh, documents that are customer facing documents and the customer being the employee at this point. Uh, again, and those really um, can be made available to employees in the service portals of those functions, too. And then finally, uh, product or service reference. This really gets into the operational areas. It could be for a sales team. It could be for service teams, um, those type of things. Um, but it also may be uh, accessed from uh, across the organization. It could be engineering specs, collateral from marketing, uh, logos, and it's used across business units uh, or, or perhaps only in a, in a certain division. And again, so you can get, have an engineering resource library, uh, you could have a marketing, um, you know, reference or marketing um, resource library that they, they present to, that all employees could then get the right logo uh, for use, the style guides, those type of things. And you also have to look at document activities. There's document creation um, and collaboration development on that document there. A team working on it, approving, updating it. There's the published version, and then there's uh, reference only type things. So uh, the first one we talked about could be a policy out there, and you're developing a policy and it's published out there. Uh, it could be a proposal template, and the same thing happens. Uh, reference only might be, again, um, you know, uh, legal references, um, references for uh, ITIL, for instance, is, is a reference type thing um, for uh, standards and those type of things. Those don't change a lot. Those typically um, are, are kept just for reference purposes. So let's take a look now after talking about that and what the alignment would be with Office 365 document tools, okay? So OneDrive Personal, okay? Uh, you get that automatically when you become an Office 365 user. And this is really your personal documents synced to your client. So, um, you know, it could be things you're working on, uh, only you're working on, you're not collaborating with anybody or that type of thing, and you're not quite done with it or whatever is going on. It It, it is on your client machine, but it's also... Um, sync to OneDrive. Then there is OneDrive for business. Okay, this is for a group or a team. Now, we we found that um, the best way to use this is not for everything. Okay, but for documents that that group in, or team is using in in you know it's an active document in a process in a project it could be or it could be collateral development or it could be policy development or something like that. And it's typically the documents that groups want to collaborate over uh, as well. Or it could even be for a cross-functional um, group such as, you know, the Revenue Ideas group uh, that has sales and marketing and maybe some engineering people participating in it. And they're collecting ideas and stuff. That's a group collaboration doc. Um, then you have SharePoint uh, libraries, okay, and in our in the, in a department portal, in a in the staff side of a department portal, and these are things that are only available to the staff. So we recommend putting them in. They're not really in process. They are um, used as part of that function, and that's where we see SharePoint libraries um, in a particular portal be useful. OneDrive is not necessarily in a portal. It's for a peer-to-peer uh, -peer dynamic group. But this could be completed docs, could be policy versions, um, their uh, different ones, forms, etc. Could also be functional reference documents. That's in the staff portal uh, out there. Now, we also believe that departments should have a service portal, an employee service portal, where employees can come and get services from IT or HR. And there, in there, you can have a um, SharePoint library be a uh, resource center um, in departments there as well. Um, and then also you have Doc Central for policies and procedures. That's a SharePoint library too. And the nice thing there is you can do searches, uh, specific uh, directed searches across those uh, type of things too, and across different functional sites. So 
the other thing I've talked a little bit about is the structure. And I'll just review with you, and you can watch a whole video on this, but we found that in putting together uh, SharePoint sites and online portals uh, with an internet at the top, the best practice approach to this is really what you see here. Have an internet home, um, have um, an employee self-service with uh, um, centralized help that they could get help or service requests from any department in a common way. Doc Central, which we'll talk about a little bit more here, uh, as a central point to get to um, frequently used employee facing docs. And Process Central is a place that they could link to and get processes like time off or other things, but also could be a place that uh, um, they could uh, get to forms uh, either in Doc Central or it could be a uh, online form that is built into a process with approvals in Process Central. And then departments down here is we, instead of having just team sites, you know, we recommend that you you have more of a department site that has both an employee side um, of it and a staff portal. So if we take a look at, though, the four pillars of what we talked about employees need, um, and again, we're only focusing on docs here, but this also supports those four pillars. So information, news, and so on is gathered up here. Resources such as documents, media, other things is gathered here. Um, Getting services in a consistent way is in a, with a consistent service request system here and process central where they can get at different processes, whether it be, you know, in your payroll, ERP or built in ones in, in SharePoint here. And then finally, interacting with departments that each have two portals, an employee portal and a staff portal out here. And this is what serves as kind of the basic structure um, in any organizations, and you'll see that what we do is we actually populate it um, with the containers for documents. So if it's um, policies, procedures, forms, and you want to consolidate it across um, different uh, departments, um, that's it's part of Doc Central, and that's a SharePoint library. Um, if you want to get have employee portals resource library, so this would be things like I want to find that PowerPoint reference card or how to conduct an interview. Those exist down in because they're not used all the time in the departments, but you can do a search from here and find those. And it pulls only though from those um, employee portals resource libraries. It's not going to pull from ones that are uh, confidential or not used by uh, all employees. And that's really where the staff. Um, in the staff side of the portals, there is a SharePoint uh, library, and that's where you're going to have functional uh, documents and references and, and so on as well. And um, then finally, you're also going to have you know, ones that are collaborative, either in projects or those type of things that may be across departments or maybe part of the department, and it's related to your groups and teams. And that's where you put, again, um, active documents as opposed to here which may be reference documents or um, uh, uh, published documents here of different versions. So um, again these are collaboration docs and they're in the context of typically groups that you're working in but it could also be a cross uh, functional group. And then finally um, for divisions or groups let's say it's a business unit and the business unit is selling widgets um, there versus another business unit which is selling uh, parts. Um, here, this could be a SharePoint document library as a resource library for engineering specs or whatever it might be as part of this division portal, but also you could have uh, different groups within the division using collaborative documents in, in Teams. So this is how we kind of uh, link your SharePoint portal structure to the document containers there, but still make it easy for employees to find what they need, either by uh, browsing here or doing a search or visiting the service uh, area of these departments uh, where they can you know, get the latest news and information. But uh, not only that, but they can go into the, say, IT resource um, library and find what they need. And it also gives IT a place that they can deposit things for uh, to be consumed by their customers, the employees. So let's go back and see how that's applied to an operational structure. Again, we have the doc center with a uh, search up here. Um, we've got internal libraries and external libraries and teams and groups uh, here, as well as um, the different areas um, that uh, are part of divisions or teams and groups. 
So think if you're thinking about it this way, um, it, it makes these documents much more useful in the context of where they probably would be used. So at this point, um, what, what I'm going to do is uh, show you a demonstration of um, what it looks like in portals to have your documents set up in this way. And I'll, I'll actually be demonstrating uh, our products. It, they are a set of um, out-of-the-box uh, portals, but they are portals as you could design them as well, um, uh, pre-set up with all of this. So um, it's already got an internet portal. It's got the employee self-service with doc centers, and it's got your different departments here, again, with employee portals and um, your staff portals with the documents in different places. The search is already set up and even uh, projects area for collaborative documents there. And the nice thing is it integrates with um, all the components of Office 365 uh, and the document components uh, of both OneDrive and SharePoint mixed in here too. So um, this is all built on top of SharePoint natively. These are all um, out-of-the-box solutions, but they actually are templates that are 100% customizable built on top of SharePoint. So at this point, um, and with a whole set of enhanced forms, notifications, actions, and so on, to give you an accelerated um, uh, beginning to your whole portal structure, and it could be applied to any kind of uh, portal structure uh, out there as well. And of course, we can support any type of uh, departments. So let's take a look at how uh, documents are organized within this structure in a demonstration. For a demonstration, uh, I'll use uh, an example structure here. So you'll see me actually come into our internet homepage, and I'll be an employee that wants to find a particular um, policy on uh, perhaps uh, employee time off or drug use or something like that. So I'll actually be going in and showing you the doc center and where they can find uh, frequently used employee forms like policies, procedures, forms, and those type of things as part of the uh, employee services um, site and the doc central. Then I will show you also how I could be an employee that goes into the IT service portal and goes and finds, for instance, a PowerPoint uh, quick reference or something. I'll also show how we can search up here and do it without having to go into that portal. But this will also show kind of the service portal and what might be in a resources library. I will then become change roles and become part of the IT staff and show where the IT staff uses the uh, libraries and SharePoint libraries inside the portal, as well as going to the uh, OneDrive and where you might access it via Teams and groups uh, like the IT support group. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm in our intranet page, and this is actually uh, internet provided by uh, SP Marketplace, our company, um, but it's uh, a radiant solar intranet. Now I'm going to be using the classic view with our CSS applied here, but um, our products also can support the modern uh, look and feel as well as even um, communication sites, and we call this Communication Plus uh, as well. And so if you'd like to learn more about that, that's on our website. But really what I'm trying to show here is how you might integrate your document strategy into a portal structure. So if I'm on my internet, um, one of the things we will see is that there are uh, department portals that I could go into and get services. And there also is this self-service portal, and this is where the Doc Central could reside. You could also put a link to it, say, from your top site to uh, Doc Central too. Now, other other documents such as um, news and announcements and information we really cover in the communication segment of the webinar series. But let's say I want to uh, go in and find a you know policy document here. Perhaps uh, I live in California. We just voted in that marijuana could be used recreationally, and I want to see if it's changed our drug policy at all uh, re relating to that. So a way I could get to it here is I could go and link right to Doc Central, or I could go into the employee services, which is really where it is. So I'll go into the employee self-service uh, portal here um, just to show you uh, kind of the structure, how we have our portals. And uh, then I can also go into the Doc Central area. Now, one of the things that we do is, uh, again, this is kind of a central place where we consolidate documents across departments for 
things like policies, procedures, forms, those type of things as well. And in this case, um, there is physically a document library for those on this site. But also, if I want to find something in the lower level site, say the um, departments, I can always do a search here, and we'll show you that in just a minute. So I can either browse through it <coughs> here as well. I could go in and actually sort by metadata. Uh, I could also do it in a visual view um, using uh, Delve or uh, here as well. But we find most of our uh, customers still like to uh, use, for instance, the traditional uh, list view uh, or library view. And I can go in, the nice thing is I, I can go in and search across this library and see anything related to drugs. And there, of course, is the drug test policy. And I can take a look at that or maybe how it works in our um, handbook there. And, and again, because I'm in Office 365, I can just download these or open them up uh, online here uh, using Word Online in this case, or it could be a PDF to take a look at it. I could also go in and search for forms and other things here too. So Doc Central is kind of just a central place for frequently used uh, employee documents. Now, let's say um, I also want to maybe see a PowerPoint, uh, get a PowerPoint quick start, see if that's anywhere. It actually exists down in the IT portal, but I'll show you how you can also get to it from here because we want to make it easy for employees to get to um, different components of what they're allowed to see. So I'll go in and say, you know, go in and find uh, anything related to PowerPoint. And of course, um, it brings up the PowerPoint quick start guide. We can even see over here uh, that it gives me a preview uh, here. And I can open this, I can download this, uh, and do a number of other things too. So uh, it went out and act obviously, uh, it looks like PowerPoint's mentioned in other documents here. But uh, this is really the one I want. And again, I can just click on it here uh, and open this right up from here and even download it. And here's the PowerPoint 2013 uh, quick guide. So what I did here is really go into Doc Central, which we've created as part of our employee services level just below the internet. Internet's really your communication and navigation portal. And I was able to get to documents as well. Let's go back up though to the internet. And let's say that I was, um, you know, wanted to actually go into IT and see what other resources um, they may have as far as documents there. So I could, from here, go to the IT uh, employee portal. And uh, once again, it knows that I'm an employee, not part of the IT staff, so it sends me to the My IT Portal. Again, this is one of our out-of-the-box uh, portals. It's a department portal. And this is where I could actually log a new IT case, uh, look up information and knowledge base, uh, as well, I could see latest news, support contacts, announcements, so on. So it really is almost like a bank branch service portal, but it's it's for an employee portal. And we have this for, you know, it depends on HR, uh, facilities, marketing, a number of different portals where we set up a service portal uh, out there because they're really internal service departments. But here's another area for docs. And so there is a what we call a useful docs or resource library that is uh, that IT has for in particular, um, providing and where they can place things that uh, are for their customers. So here's all the different quick uh, access guides here. If I want to see everything on uh, related to MS Office, I can do that. Or I could search in particular uh, for PowerPoint here as well. And there's that again. So um, this is actually accessing it from the IT portal. I could even go into that knowledge base uh, as well and um, you know, look up any questions I have on about PowerPoint, or I could uh, look for additional PowerPoint, um, even uh, links to videos or whatever as well too. So that's the employee kind of um, experience for where, how they can find documents. And as you can see, they could either go to the Doc Central um, or they could uh, go to um, the uh, department portals uh, or functional portals to get what they need as well too. Now, at this point, I'm going to switch roles, and I'm back up at the internet site, and um, I, I might now be part of the IT staff. So as, as part of the IT staff, I might uh, go in here, and when I press on IT portal here, it automatically recognizes me as being part of the IT staff permission group, and it takes me into the other side of the IT portal, which is your staff portal here. And of course, um, over here, now being part of the IT staff, uh, there's different resources out here. So 
Um, there is documents that we use as part of the IT staff. Also, I might be part of a group here. So uh, if I'm part of the IT group, there's a OneDrive uh, for our IT group. So rather than having to go over here and look for groups and look or go into OneDrives and look for the OneDrive, we actually access it from the um, operational portal, which is what we call accessing uh, your Office 365 services in the context of uh, the work that you're doing right now. So if I go look at, for instance, uh, this group here, uh, I can uh, go out there, which takes me into the 365 group. I could also go into Teams, and this is where I could also go in and access our calendar and stuff like that through the group. Or if I don't want to go to the group, I could actually uh, go in and go directly to the group OneDrive. This has a lot of different things in it. It could be things that we're working on uh, or collaborating on. Too. It tends to be more active type things. We're actually looking at uh, um, some best practices for deploying uh, the internet across the organization. So we have some references there. Here's actually uh, a thing about hub sites and whether we should put those in. And it's a presentation that uh, I'll be doing um, to the IT team and to management. So going back to our portal, though, we also have some SharePoint libraries, and these are more for things that are references for the IT group and so on. And so we choose to keep them out here and not out on our OneDrive. The OneDrive is more collaborative things for current projects or other things that we're doing. But there also is documents out here that uh, are part of the portal, the staff portal. And you'll see that these documents now um, are much more reference type documents or they cross relate to um, things like assets or cases. And this is where I talked a little bit about in the webinar about that documents out there are not just something that reside on their own, but they're typically, especially in the functional areas, related to something that's being worked on. So we can see that, you know, here are the different documents for this. And there's actually a list out here for uh, asset tracking. And so if I go to this asset out here and take a look at that, we will see that I can take a look at this laptop. I can see the history of it and everything, even other related cases that have been put out there because there is a help desk built into this portal. Um, but you'll see IT documents. And here are a number of documents that are in this document library that we've cross-referenced because they relate in particular to this asset. So it's has a, it's still a, you know, it has a warranty um, and it has uh, uh, user guides and install checklists and a number of different things here, and even a service agreement. So when somebody's working on this asset, they can cross-reference it to these documents. So going back to the IT staff portal here, um, uh, we see that we can access documents perhaps through the Teams, uh, which is again the OneDrive. The, both Teams and group pages are really just um, kind of front pages that uh, access the different things related to the team. Could be Planner, OneDrive, and so on. But with this, I don't have to go to the team. I can actually go directly to these resources related to uh, this group and this department. So overall, uh, just as kind of a summary here, as an employee, I went into the internet home. I went to the doc center and was able to find uh, policies, procedures, forms, those things that uh, are frequently used by employees uh, and are available really to all employees there. Um, I also needed something specific from a specific department, so I also did a search and found that PowerPoint reference card, which actually resided in the resources library in the employee uh, service portal for IT. Um, and that's what this does is it searches each of the different areas and it searches these um, document libraries. So the nice thing about this approach is for the employees, it's almost a destination that um, these departments can drop these into and make them available, almost like a web page with resources on them um, for uh, things they want to show. They don't have to worry about that employees will see these other libraries and internal documents. Those are all separated. And it could be that something that's in here might be in one of these over here, but you'll always know that this is the latest one out there and this is kind of a managed for um, your customers, the employee. But we also saw where I became a um, part of the IT staff. We saw where I used a SharePoint library, which had um, subject-related documents. It could be, you know, as we saw, related to a, a computer asset. Uh, if it was HR, it would be an employee document or something like that. And we also saw where there was a groups uh, related to the IT support team here, and there was a OneDrive 
And this is where we did things that we were collaborating on. And in this case, um, I was preparing for a uh, intranet, um, enterprise intranet uh, uh, kind of deployment um, presentation that I was giving to uh, management. And there's a working group on that. And that's where we're sharing our and collaborating on active documents here. So this is a lot of times reference documents uh, up here and um, or things that may be the published versions or in process uh, versions of things you might be providing to the employees um, or in process policies, because policies you can also do within a department. There's actually a library for that. And then when you publish it, it publishes the latest version of uh, the older version. But down here is where you're keeping all the different versions as well. Um, and what this does is it sets up a structure that is the same for all different departments as well. I did not show you the division ones, but this is very much like the staff ones where you're going to have product resource um, there, products, uh, resource libraries, and, and uh, in-process OneDrive things for engineering specs and so on. So again, <clears throat> what's very important is you're putting the documents in where they're most likely to be used, but then giving access through search. So that'll complete the organized resources and documents for uh, this webinar. But remember, um, we do have other webinars in this series. It's all about the steps to creating a digital workplace on Office 365. So if you haven't had a chance to, take a look at our other webinars here. Um, I think it, you'll uh, see that there's a playlist attached to it or on our website. Um, and also, you can learn more about our out-of-the-box portal products. It cr really creates a full structure. We've already put some of the best practices uh, into it for communications, document organization, uh, services, and so on that you're learning about in these webinars. And so you can either take that and apply it into your um, portals out there, and we hope that this is giving you some ideas about that. But also, we have out-of-the-box portals that are 100% customizable, built on um, SharePoint Online. And you can see information about those at spmarketplace.com.